these chestnut seeds have been stored for the winter in a moist peat moss medium in the refrigerator, and that's to stimulate winter. So the seed needs that cold treatment in, in, in order to germinate properly in the spring. And after, the, after that cold requirement is met, they'll germinate as soon as the temperature warms up. And so I've got, I've got my pots in here in the greenhouse. Soil temperature is warm, and you can see, I think you can see that the seeds have started germinating. Many of them have a, have a root coming out of them. What's important to notice is that every chestnut has a, a pointy end that's opposite the hilar scar. The pointy end of the nut is where the root comes out. That's the embryonic root called the radical. Now the shoot is also kind of going to come out of that same pointy end. So it's very important that the chestnut be planted just like that in the pot. And you know, it's easy to imagine this chestnut has a flat side. If it fell off of the tree, it would land on the ground like so. So the shoot, the shoot and the root come out of that pointy end. And so in the pot, what I'm going to do, I'm going to plant it so that that pointy end is horizontal, so that it's pointing horizontal. And I'm going to notice that this one is already turning downward. It responds to gravity. So it's very important that I don't that I don't plant it like so. I don't want the I don't want the root part, I don't want this pointy part pointing down because then the shoot would have to grow in sort of a curly cue and it would make my it would make my tree crooked. Okay, so to get a nice straight tree, I'm gonna plant it just sideways like so. And the the planting depth is about as deep as the seed is, or maybe one and a half times the size of the seed. So I'm going to plant this seed about yay deep, and I'm just going to put it in there and cover it up, and then we'll water it. Now, I'm going to label every one as I go so I don't lose the label. By the way, this is uh, Chinese chestnut. We grow these for controls in our experiment. I'll plant another one now. This one, you can see the root is a little bit longer. I'm still going to plant it so that it's horizontal, so that that pointy end is horizontal. I'm going to get the root pointing down. I'm going to plant it the same depth. There it goes. I'm going to put a label in. Okay. I give everybody a dose of fertilizer, and I use a capsulized fertilizer. This is a slow-release capsulized fertilizer. It's a complete fertilizer with micronutrients, and I just top dress. I top dress each pot with about a tablespoon of fertilizer. When we water them, they'll get mixed in with the top uh, layers of the soil. And because it's a slow, re slow release fertilizer, this dose will last them through, oh, the first few months of their life in the greenhouse. This is a siphon, and it's, uh, some people call it a fertilizer injector. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna make a concentrated solution of uh, liquid fertilizer, and I'm gonna fertigate my plants. And so as I, as I water the plant then, the, the injector is going to mix concentrated fertilizer solution with my irrigation water. And the fertilizer that I use, it's a brand of fertilizer that's made on purpose for rhododendrons and azaleas, which are acid loving plants. Chestnut trees like an acidic soil. This is the, this is the fertilizer that I like. The dose I'm gonna use is would be a tablespoon per gallon. So I'm gonna put in 14 of these, one, 14. So there's my 14X solution. Um, and I need a gallon of water. And I'm gonna stir that up. I wanna make sure every pot gets the same amount of water and so what I do is I sort of count to three. I'll say, okay, one, two, three. One, two, three. Now this medium, because it has a lot of peat moss in it, if the medium gets dry, it's sort of hard to wet. In other words, it, it resists getting wet. So I tend to water the medium before I plant it to make sure that the medium is at least a little bit moist. So even, even these pots that don't have seeds yet, we often water them anyway as we water the greenhouse just to make sure that they're watered. The early growth 
of the tree is determined mostly by the mass of the seed. In other words, a larger seed makes a larger seedling initially. So the size difference in these seedlings mostly has to do with the size of the nut. This is a Nanking Chinese, which makes a great big nut and you know a massive seed. You get a massive big plant. This family is a, a row of smaller trees. This was an American chestnut. The nut is very small. And so it has a, a much smaller mass and therefore it has less food stored. And so the initial seedling you get is, is much smaller. Ultimately, these American chestnuts will outgrow their Chinese, uh, Chinese cousins here and make a much larger tree. But this initial seedling difference, the size, is, is due mostly to the size of the nut. We begin planting in the greenhouse in January and February, and the seeds germinate within a few weeks' time. Over the course of the next month or two, they grow quickly. We fertilize them and water them. And by April or May, we move them to the outdoors. We move them into our container nursery where we water them with an uh, irrigation system. So each container gets uh, the same amount of water. Um, rarely, and depending on the species, some, some seedlings will actually bloom in that first year. So by June or July, you may see a flower or two, um, especially on the chinkapins, not so often on the American chestnuts. And by September or October, you might even get a ripened nut to harvest from a container-grown seedling in the first growing season.